engineers, teachers, lawyers, armies, security guards, gays, and etc. have languages that only their groups could understand. And if it is our first time mingling with our groups, we find it awkward or sometimes out of place for the reason that there are strange words or expressions. Therefore, we need to do some research for us to be part of their world. This is Teacher L once again, and for today, we are going to talk about the languages that our doctors, nurses, and other medical workers are using. This is about in the world of linguistics, the language of medicine. Let's begin by reviewing the following abbreviations. These words are sometimes difficult to pronounce. Let's begin with AD, Anno Domini. It means advancing age. AM, anti meridian, before noon. PM, post meridian, afternoon. ETC, etc. It means and many more. EG, exemplary gratia. It means, for example, RIP. Requiescat in pace, in English, rest in peace. These words, anno domini, anti meridian, post meridian, etc., exempli gratia, and requiescat in pace, are Latin words. Let's trace first the history of medical language. Do you know that three fourths of medical terminologies is of Greek origin? And one half of these is less century old. You know why? Because when the Romans conquered Greece, the knowledge and language of both cultures merged, resulting in new medical concepts regarding disease treatment and containment. Am I now boggling your mind? Why Greek and not Latin? Greek. Why Greek? Because Greeks were the founder of rational medicine, from Hippocrates to Galen. Everybody knows Hippocrates. And Greek language is quite suitable for the building of compound words. Compound words meaning two words are formed into one. Example, exemplary gratia, appendicitis, cystoscope, and creatinine. And most of all, Greek forms international language. Let's analyze the structure of this medical term, myocarditis. Let's go. Myocarditis. From the root word cardio, which means heart. The prefix my or myo, it means muscle. And the suffix it is, means inflammation. That's why the meaning of myocarditis means a muscle layer of the heart that is inflamed. And this medical word, Myocarditis is a combination of Greek and Latin words. Let's study the plural forms of the following medical terms. Arteria, singular, the plural is artery. Diverticulum, plural, diverticula. Femur, femora. Lentigo or lentigo, lentiginous. Ankylosis, ankylosis, condyloma, condylomata, arthritis, arthritis. Let's trace the origin of the following medical terms. For the cardiology, gastritis, and nephroesia, these are mainly Greek. And for the words corin and ventriculus, 
These are anatomical terminologies, which are Latin. And for the words like massage, passage, plaque, pipette, and bougie, these are French. And for the words like varicella, belladonna, and influenza, these are Italian. Majority of these medical terms are really very difficult to pronounce and how much more in remembering these words. So for these medical terms, there is this what we call as UMLS. UMLS stands for Unified Medical Language System. What is Unified Medical Language System? This is a compendium of many controlled vocabularies in the biomedical sciences. UMLS is designed and is maintained by the U.S. National Library of Medicine and is updated quarterly. And for this library, Lindbergh is the director of the Library of Medicine. That is just for more trivia. According to Taylor of 2008, medical scientific terms are the meat and potatoes of clinical discourse. Abbreviations, acronyms, euphemisms, jargons, and slangs are the condiments. The language of medicine makes terminology meaningful by resenting terms with the context of real life. Real life health care scenarios according to Chabner of 2015. There we go. Let's start from the most common and maybe quite familiar medical terms. These are epistaxis. Epistaxis means nosebleed or acute hemorrhage from the nostril. Diarrhea is a journal of daily events. Slews, watery, frequent bowel. Ice cream headache. It's a pain caused by extreme cold. Like eating ice cream, there's a pain after eating ice cream. Corn, it's a callus on your foot. Ingrown toenail, it happens when sides of toenail grow into the surroundings of the skin. And eye floater, which means little bits of protein material in the jelly inside your eyes. The following are medical slang. So if you happen to encounter these words and expressions, you should be able to understand what these slangs are. Examples, we have 3-H enema. It's 3-H stands for high, hot, and hell of a lot. We also have 4-Fs, which means female, female, fat, fertile, and 40 that indicates rest of gallbladder disease. We have also the term Betty. Betty is a patient with diabetes. Baby catcher is an obstetrician. We have baby doctors for doctors in training. We have bagged and tagged or BNT for after death ready for mortuary. And we have the word squash, which means brain. We have some more examples of medical slats. We have banana. Do you imagine the color of banana? The skin is yellow when it's right, right? So banana meaning a person with jaundice. We also have boyfriends. Boyfriends mean cute old men that are pleasant to care for. Coffin dacha means old person that unexpectedly survived. Monkey box, which means female genitalia origin. Pocket book, which means female's vaginal area. Doctor, it's a nurse acting like a doctor. And we have code pink, which means patients who are thought to be homosexual. Now, let's see if you're familiar with the following medical acronyms. AGMI, ain't gonna make it. ALS, absolute loss of sanity. ART, assuming room temperature. 
It means patient is dead. B W O, baby won't come out. D A A D, dead as a doornail. D I B, dead in bed. D I C, death is coming. And D N D, it means dead and ready. What about the following acronyms? T F T B. Too fat to breathe. T O B P. Tired of being pregnant. B I B A. Brought in by ambulance. B N O. Bowels not opened. D N A. Did not attend. S T I. Sexually transmitted infection. C A B G, zipper, and B B S, pretty, pretty bad shape. Since I am a Cebuano, I'm going to give you examples of medical terms with equivalent Cebuano meaning. Let's start from nasal flaring. Nasal flaring means Nostrils widen when a person is breathing. In Cebuano, lisngag ilong. We also have gluteus maximus, which means the largest muscle in the buttock that moves the thigh. In Cebuano, dako lobot. Next we have zygomatic bones. It's bone that forms the prominent part of the cheek and outer side of the eye socket. In Cebuano, Pagaognaung. Fourth, we have frontal bone. This is bone in the skull found in the forehead of the region. In Cebuano, Dakogagdang, Hayag o Kaogmaon. We also have alopecia. Alopecia means loss of hair. The Cebuano word, upao. Here are more examples of medical terms with equivalent Cebuano translation. We have anasarca. It means extreme generalized edema, widespread swelling of the body. Generalized edema, widespread swelling of the body. In Cebuano, it's tambok. Tambok means obese. We also have fast drip, which is a method of administering fluid drop by drop through the vein in a short period of time. And this Cebuana translation is really funny. Oros oros ang gipati ng gugma. Fast drip. This is connected with love. And we ha also have the term exophthalmia. Exophthalmia, which means an abnormal protrusion of the eyeball. In Cebuano, budlat sigag mata super. Extreme, extremely big eyes. And the last one, we have ischial tuberosity, which is swollen part or a broadening of the bone in the frontal portion, which is the lowest of the three major bones. In Cebuano, hait o globot. I hope you are learning something from our lesson today. Remember, Hippocrates is the father of medicine, and Claudius Gallen is one of the most legendary doctors in the Roman Empire. And medical terms were created to identify the various anatomical structures, diagnoses, instruments, procedures, protocols, and medications. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Teacher L. Let's learn language.
for knowledge.